after Good the night. night. There is a light and the flame is burning. <laughs> Unfortunately, the flame is actually out. Extinguished. It's extinguished with the news that the EBU was unable to negotiate a deal between Russia, Ukraine, and itself to allow the Russian contestant to participate this year. She Are you ready is- to talk about this? I don't want to talk about it, but we should. Let's, Let's do, do this. this. From 43, we move to 42. Russia is out of Eurovision 2017. And regardless of where you stand on the political conflict between the countries, I think we're always sad to see a country go. You know, some people say they withdrew. Others say they were booted. Regardless of your vantage point, we have one less country this year at Eurovision. Devin. One less country celebrating diversity. It's painful. It really is painful. And again, I don't hold any kind of political views as such i'm just here to party listen to good songs and celebrate diversity which is what the slogan requires us to do in the true olympic spirit in the true olympic spirit it's like moscow 1980 well the u.s did boycott that (laughs) so maybe that's not the best example but no we we just wanted to celebrate the song and the contestants i wasn't even thinking of julia as russian i was thinking of julia as a singer with a great backstory a lovely voice you know in her personal story yes she's in a wheelchair and that There was something to that that made this extra interesting and extra special. She was celebrating all aspects of diversity, because diversity is not just black and white, male and female, gay and straight. It cuts across many, many different issues, and I think that's why this was important. Some people say, oh, we already had Monica Kuzinska from Poland, but that's not the point. Oh, wait, wait, so because we've had one, that's it, door shut. Absolutely, (laughs) I find that argument rather silly. Um, I guess, where do you stand, though? Did you want to see Ukraine allow Russia in, and do you think that they were justified to keep her out? Ukraine has its laws. Yes. And, you know, the law, unfortunately, affects 79% of Russia's stars who have performed in Crimea at some point. So it's really all sweeping, all encompassing. However, they've maintained that we, they're just against artists with criminal backgrounds. They're not against Russia performing. And if Russia had already guaranteed a spot to Julia Samilova for 2018... Then for goodness sake, still be in the game and select somebody else. I would have loved to see Sergei Lazarev sing Flame is Burning, like a dance remix of Flame is Burning. Because if Julia's going to compete in 2018 anyways, as you said. I think you'll find that he's also performed in Crimea. A lot of them have. True, true. It's just a difficult situation, and it's a shame that it's come to this. At the same time, Devin, I have to say, I understand why Russia did not want to have her perform via satellite, because I think that does create a second-class performance. All artists at Eurovision should have the energy of the crowd. They should be in the live arena. They should be meeting other contestants. They should be spending the time there. You know, it wouldn't look the yeah, same. Yeah, Eurovision be is a different not, venue. Exactly. <laughs> Eurovision is not just three minutes. It's 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 really a good few months actually yeah. going to all the preview parties and and certainly the two weeks that you are on ground in Kiev. You know, it's kind of really important. And for the artist as well, it just seems like a like less of a ticket yeah. if all you have to do is show up in some. Moscow theatre to kind of have it broadcast via satellite. But you know what? I bet you if Yulia had performed in a satellite venue, Russia would have built something massive, you know, like 100,000 people, and they would have given her an even bigger stage, which would have been interesting. More to the point, if that had also, if they had accepted that offer, this year's Moscow pre-party wouldn't have been cancelled and could have been actually the best pre-party. It's all just a big shame, and like we're not going to wade into the politics. We'll just say we hope that peace comes to everyone. We hope to see Russia at Eurovision next year. Although, of course, they may be prevented from going. It's been said oh, because no, they're no, not no, broadcasting no. I, I this year. Think, I just think the coals are too hot at the moment, and I feel that once we finish celebrating diversity in May, EBU will have to relook, re-examine some of their legislation yeah. and their protocol. And because you know there have been sanctions threatened against Ukraine for not allowing Russia to enter this year, the EBU had that on the table. So. Some people there's... think there'll be a three-year ban for Ukraine. No, I just, I, just, I just can't see that holding weight. Let's not forget Eurovision Song Contest is also a revenue-generating stream. And even when Ukraine was, you know, struggling financially, 
it, you know... They pulled out in 2015 because they were struggling financially. They pulled out in 2015 because there were other measures. But they, 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 were, they, they were discouraged <laughs> from pulling out, is the point that I'm making. Yes, but they chose to pull out. I, my, my issue is this. I think that a lot of people think the EBU, in order to restore credibility, will need to put sanctions in place and that Ukraine may face some kind some kind of sanction at the same time people say Russia will you know, you know be allowed what to we should do though we should still we should evaluate move the song let's move on to the song because this has given us a headache should we do a wee jury on it we have done a wee wee jury because <laughs> we had all 38 of our jurors review Flame is Burning before this was settled before we knew whether Yulia would be singing or not and it is time to discuss it now Devin let's kick it off with you what was your score and analyze the song deep in the night <laughs> I was moved by this. Not so much the song, but just the whole package. The slogan of celebrating diversity, I felt that it ticked the box more than any other um, entry. Um, It's a torch song. It's very touching. It just fills me with so much positivity and love. The issue I did have, though, was I felt that Julia wasn't really singing it, that others were singing it for her, and that was reflective in my scoring. Now, look, the track we saw was obviously the kind of remastered, auto-tuned one, and the same for all contestants across Europe. Oftentimes, when you hear that initially remastered track, it doesn't sound as good because it's not the real voice. We know that Julia can sing. Hello, Moliva. Did you hear Moliva? It was stunning when she sang it live on Factor A. I gave... Look, I'm Securing her the second, you know, a a runner-up position in in that... Heavily, com- you know, competitive. Let me just break it down. Series. I gave this an eight point five, and I can already see people freaking out, regardless I think of it's whether. High. I know the thing is the song on its own. I would not download. However, it's everything surrounding the song that makes it more special. And as I've said repeatedly, you do not judge performances by your ears alone. It is your head. It is your heart. And in the context of all this drama. The theme of perseverance is even more special. You know, yeah, deep in the night, there's there's this light still burning. I find it really touching. I think it harks back to Soviet-era pop. No, it does, actually. And, you know, the first minute when the guitar comes in, the strumming, it's very sweet and breezy, like you're just in a park making love and drinking a pina colada. It's got a lovely chorus as well. And, and it, it, the Russians are very good at bringing songs that become earworms. Mm. And, like, once you hear it, it kind of loops in your head. And, you know, I don't think the enunciation was the strongest. I think that the backing vocals in the remastered track were overpowered. The enunciation was really weak. And, you know, again, that we're reflected up in my score. score, which is six. You know, so... You gave this a six? I gave this a six. Are you sure? Yes. I thought it was lower. No, it was oh, a six. Really? I gave this a six, yes. It's not a 4.5? No, it's a For six. For some reason, I thought you gave it a really low score. Okay. No, it's a six. Well, well, it's lovely to hear. I just... I don't know. This is a song that I will play again. And... It, it, the message has made it musical, if that makes sense. We, we, everything that surrounded this. It's very this. musical theater, actually. Yeah, it's very yeah. musical theater. And it's funny because we don't even really talk about the wheelchair anymore. It's become an afterthought. And I think that's part of the power here is that yes. when you put diversity on show, eventually you forget about the diversity and the issue switches to something else. And that's what the She's whole point is. Girl, she is. Though. You just see this beautiful, beautiful blonde girl. Her yeah. postcard is very sweet. Beautiful. And I think she, in many ways, people will say she's been used. I don't think she's been used. She knew the score coming in. She knows the game. Used? She's a smart woman. And they, I don't think so. She's and, using another, this for her career, which is why. Absolutely. That is and wise. another thing I have to point out is that, obviously, she's gone into the contest. She's been internally picked. I'm sure in her sort of career prospects, Eurovision would have been one of them. And she hasn't been used. Yeah. She was a runner-up on X Factor. And yeah. those are the kind of people that go on to Eurovision yeah. too. So she would have been a choice at some point. She made it very clear in her pre- and post-interviews that it was always her dream to go. Yeah. And it was finally happening. So she's not being used. She's taking advantage of a situation, which is what all people in show business have to do. When an opportunity presents itself, you have to seize the day. And she did that. So I say more power to her. Let's move closer. I feel like we're so tiny. <laughs> There are, of course, 38 Wee Wee jurors all over the world on the panel this year, and they too have rated the song, and it is time to show the result. Okay, that's low. That score is very low. (laughs) It's a low score. (laughs) Listen, apparently some people do just judge by their ears, and that's fine. Um, Obviously, for me, I think the song has more meaning. But then when you've got 43 um, judgments to pass on, and you can't give everybody a 10 and a 0, you kind of have to distribute your scores 
you know, 8.5 is high. <laughs> it's a personal judgment. I, the songs that I want to see in the final, I give high scores to. So. And she would have qualified, she actually. Have. And with all this debate, and I think she would have been top five if she'd gone. Oh, I think she would have done really well. <laughs> she, would, she would have had the media behind her. You know, people, even if they weren't behind her per se, they'd be talking about last her. Year's, um, last year's ranking. Yeah, you know, honestly, she really could have. And it's going to be interesting to see what she, she could does. have actually won it. <laughs> she could have won. That flame is burning bright. It'll be curious to see what happens in 2018 if the broadcasters stick by their guns and say okay we will send you because oh, i think they have said that and if they no, they've said it but will they do it because if they don't do it it's going to look very bad as if this was just all a pr well stuff. if they don't do it you know what's going to happen julia is going to say oh i don't want to do it anymore <laughs> <laughs> oh in any case that's what we think what do you think the where trauma do... of last year i can't go on <laughs> where do you stand on the drama between russia and ukraine would you have liked to see julia samalova at your Vision, and what do you rate her song? You can let us know here on Weebie Blogs. Is your flame still burning? If so, please add your comments down below and follow us on Instagram, Pinterest, Snapchat, YouTube, Tumblr, Facebook. Put down that fire <laughs> extinguisher and let's celebrate diversity. We'll see you later. Bye. Bye.